Psalm chapter 100 verses 4 to 5 says, Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. We come together today to praise and worship our God. Join us as we sing our songs of praise to the Lord.
Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe Our judge and our defend suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated on a cross. I believe in God. Good morning. We thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity that we can be together through this uh, online worship. And uh, today we will ponder upon the question, what makes a Baptist a Baptist? Sa Sinihaga, dako ako niya kayayunan niya magadala sa inyo sa mensahe about lessons from Baptist heritage. 
kag nagapasalamat kita sa Dios nga sa sining nga adlaw matunaan naton ang aton nga kasaysayan. Pagapamangkot man bala kita sa aton makugalingon kun nga adaptis kita di nagalin ang mga bautista sa sining pungsod Pilipinas. Ano bala ang aton nga mga inagihan? Ano bala ang aton mga kasaysayan? Ano bala ang aton nga mga lessons nga aton matunaan sa mga nagliligan? Luya ko magsabat sa sining pamangkot sa Sining uh, naunang statement, what makes a Baptist a Baptist? My friends, Baptists are sons and daughters of the Reformation. Atun dumdumon yung atun kasi sayang atun historia. It started from the time of the Reformation. Kung sa inyo madumduman sa October 31, 1517, may isa ka tao nga ngalan niya si Martin Luther. Nagpadala siya sa isang kasulat nga may 95 thesis dito sa iya kasulat sa kay uh, Archbishop of Mainz. Kag si Luther, ginlansang maniya ang iya ining ang mga thesis nga ginadespute niya ang practice of indulgences sa mga kasimbahanan dito sa Germany. Kag iya ining lansang dito sa simbahan sa Wittenberg sa ginatawag nga Schlosskirche Church in Wittenberg, Germany. This date now, October 31, is commemorated every year as Reformation Day. Katahong sa sining thesis ni Martin Luther, 95 minutes na ang kabilog, kaginahangkat ko kamo nga inyo buksan ang inyo nga internet kung pangitaon nyo ang ini nga mga thesis. Malipot lang ini, hindi ni pareho sa mga thesis na itong subong nga tuman kalawi. But let me give you two samples of the 95 Theses of uh, Martin Luther. Now, number 27 Theses goes like this. They preach only human doctrines who say that as soon as the money clings into the money chest, the soul flies out of purgatory. But si Lingon, sa Sinangation, ang Simbahang uh, Romano Katoliko, may arang sa doktrina nga kung magbayad lamang ikaw, magbaklon mo ang uh, imo kaluwasan, gagibutang mo sa offering, ang imo nga pagbakal, ang imo kalang magalumpat halin sa pogaturyo pakato sa langit. Ang kalang sa imo mga hinigumba, kung ikaw na mapatay man, bayran lang masaylo na ikaw sa langit. So, in kontra ina ni Martin Luther, kaya hindi inasuno sa balahan niya kasulatan. Number 82 nga thesis. Let me read. Why does not the Pope empty purgatory for the sake of holy love and the dire need of the souls that are there? If he redeems an infinite number of souls for the sake of miserable money with which to build a church. Sining ni Martin Luther, nga hindi pagbuksan ni Pope ang Papa sa Roma sa sinangatay, ang purgatorio kung matuwod manggit nga may purgatorio nga kinanlan pa sa kwarta. Kundi, mangon sa ngayon ako nga bumabuksan mo na lang ina para ang tanahan makakadbo sa langit. Nga kinanlan pa sa kwarta. Because during the time, my friends, the reality was this. Kinanlan nun sa kwarta ang Romano, sa Romano Katoliko kaya nagpatindog sila sa St. Peter's Cathedral. Nga arang nasubong sa Roma sa Italia. Amoy na ang nagpatindog sa sina ng mataong na building ang kwarta halin sa doktrina sa indulgences. That's the truth. That's the reality. And it's very sad. Luther thought that salvation and consequently eternal life are not earned by good deeds but are received only as the free gift of God's grace through the believer's faith in Jesus Christ as our Redeemer from sin. Ang theology ni Luther nagahangkat sa authority and office of the Pope by teaching that the Bible is the only source of divinely revealed knowledge from God. Amoy na ang intindugan ni Martin Luther sa sinangatiyon. Ari ang anong ka principles niya itong matunaan sa Reformation? Anong ini? Kaya hindi lang ini halin tanan sa kay Luther, kundi halin ini sa tanan ng mga reformers sa sinat na tiyon, kaya later on yung summarize ini sa atun ng mga historia. These are six fundamental principles of the Reformation ng atong matunaan. First, sola gratia. 
or grace alone. Grasya lamang sa Diyos. Inigang pahayag na ang kaluwasan halin sa grasya lamang sa Diyos. Hindi nga ang simbahan o kung sino nga tao ang nagahatag sa grasya. Ang Diyos lamang ang makahatag sa grasya. Number two, sola fide or faith alone. Inipag na pahayag mga kuturan na hindi paagi sa ritual makuha ni mo ang grasya. Dapat din magtuo kita personally sa kay Kristo Yesus, hindi pwede nga magpasakot lamang kita. Kag hindi makuha sa ritualis ang ininginatuwag ng pagtuo. Kinandan mismo kita din magatuo. Number three, solos Christos or Christ alone. Hindi nga pahayag ang kaluwasan, hindi halin kung si sino nga tao, sino nga pari, sino nga mga pastor, kundi ang kaluwasan halin lamang kay Kristo Jesus. Mga kauturan atong gindugdugon ini, hindi halin sa simbahan, hindi halin sa pari, hindi halin sa pastor, kung si sino nga tao, but Christ alone. Number four, sola scriptura. Anong but silingon sini? Scripture alone. Ini nga pahayag mga kauturan na ang source of authority sa isang kristuhanon, Amo ang balaan na kasulatan. Wala na sa iban. The Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures, amuin na ang sansaran sa atong pagtungo. Yes, gabasa kita sa mga sinulatan sa mga tao. Yes, gapamati kita sa mga wali, kaangay, sa atong ginabuhat kada domingo. Pero lantaon na itong konsunok ini sa balaan na kasulatan. Kung hindi, then sa wayo ninyo ang mga manugwali. Dapat halin lamang sa balaan niya kasulatan. Number five, soli deo gloria. Glory to God alone. Ini na kahamba ng mga kuturan, hindi dapat uh, kita magadayaw sa simahan, hindi dapat kita magadayaw sa mga tao, kundi ang kadayawan ihatag sa Diyos lamang. Number six, presbytery fidelium. Mga Latin initanan kaya sa sinala time ang lingua franca, the language of the world is uh, was Latin. So presbytery fidelium ng mga sinigon sina the priesthood of all believers. Ini nga principle very revolutionary during the time nga ah. kaya tradition during the time ang pare lamang ang makainterpretar sa balan ng kasulatan ang pare lamang ang maghambal kung ano ang incakto. But sinig sa mga reformers no. We are all priests. We have equal access to God because Jesus Christ has already done it. Kung ato na dumduman sa kamatayan ni Kristo Jesus, ang kurtina dito sa Holy of Holies na tungay na nagisi na kay may arat na kita sa open access sa Dios. My friends, nagapakita ini ng nagapahaya that we can access, we can have access to God anytime. And anywhere, makapangabuyo kita, makasimba kita kung sa diin, kag makabasa kita sa balaan na kasulatan, kag makainterpretar kita sina. So those are the six reformation principles, basic reformation principles ng atong dumdumon. Kaya out of this background, dri na tao ang mga bautista. So mga kuturan, ano ang ato matunan sa Reformation? What are the lessons that we can learn from the Reformation? First, Iglesia Reformata Semper Reformanda. Anong but siling on sini? In popularized ni Karl Barth, nag the Reformed Church must always be Reformed. Or the Reformed Church is always Reforming. But sa ngayon, kita ng mga produkto sa Reformation, dapat nagapagita kita sa kadaadlaw sa mga bagay kung paano pagkita ito mariporma ang aton nga pagtililipon, ang aton mga buluhatun sa sulod sa simbahan, kag sa sagwa sa simbahan. This is the challenge of the Reformation. Number two, we should also challenge tradition and we must challenge everything. Hindi na ito makita mga kuturan that Luther Challenge the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church. Dri nagsugod ang inatawag ng protestante. Dri nagsugod ang inatawag ng protestant because they protested against the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church. And the Baptists later on 
We challenge also the tradition of Luther and that of the other Protestant reformers. Kagamaluka mong ang reaksyon ni Daniel Luther, nila ni Calvin, kag the other reformers, sila nila, do hindi niya manami mga baptista, do sobra pa gini sila yung kaputisante. And they branded us as separatists and rebels. Now, that's a, another story later on. But, my friends, we, we challenge tradition not for the sake of just challenging it, but because we want to see something that is fundamentally better than what is being practiced at the present. Ang winning punto, hindi nga mga protesta lamang kita, hindi nga mga reforma lamang kita, o gina-challenge sa ato ng tradisyon, sa ato mga kasimahanan, o sa ato pag-inawi, for the sake of just challenging it, no. Kundi gina-challenge sa ato nila, na protesta kita, because we know that there is something better. We do not just accept things as it is, but we want to know more, and we want the best. We want what is right and what is biblical. Ambungin na ang aton nga makita. Now, ikatuwa, ang kung aton inatulukon sa Christian history, ang inatuwa sa sinatatayang na tao mga bautista is what we call the Reformation. But in the society, what is called sa sinatatayang sa sinatatayang period, it is called the Renaissance. The Renaissance period. So, sa society, tawag na Renaissance. Sa, sa church history, na tawag na Reformation. But they go hand in hand. Now, what lessons can we learn from the Renaissance? Number one, your mind is the limit. Your mind is the limit. Sino ini nagsulat, naga, naga, pabaskong sa sini nga maminsaron, is René Descartes. No, kung ninyo natundung, uh, natunduman ni siya isa ka philosopher nga ang gitsulat niya sa Latin these famous words cogito ergo sum what, is, what does it mean? I think, therefore I am Amo inang hambal ni Rene Descartes I think, therefore I am Anong kung sinigon sila? Kung anong inapaminsan mo Amo ikaw sina kagkatahong sina my friends sa aton sa sini nga pagtuon nato now previously everyone just accepted what the roman catholic church says this was because the church controlled the holy roman empire during the time and this is the reason why we had what we call the dark ages dulong na klase sa mga tinion because the people were blinded but here comes the renaissance. Here comes the time that the people opened up their minds. Si Johannes Gothenburg is a katao nga may dakok nga contribution during the time of the renaissance. Nga ah, kay nakabuhat siya sa ginatawag na printing press. Mobile printing press. And the people were able to read the Bible. One of the first printings in Johannes Gothenburg was the Bible. Kaga mga sinulatan ni Luther, ang mga sinulatan sa mga tao during the time, mga reformers. And these opened the mind of the people. So the lesson for us is that we must always be open to new ideas. We must always be open to new things, new challenges that could make our world a better place to live in. Number two, a lesson from the Renaissance is that we must explore beyond borders. Explore beyond borders. Ang mga ining times ng Renaissance, ng Reformation, yun ang start ng exploration sa mga Portuguese, Spanish, British, and later on the Americans. Ang positibo diri kay sila nila na discover nila ang kalimutan. No? Pero ang tiara na kita yan sa ato mismo ng mga, ng mga kalutaan man. But one of the things that they realize is that the world is not flat. Wala sa apat na corner ang kalimutan, wala sa end ang earth. Hindi flat, ngayaring langit sa baba, o aring impyernos lalo. No, the earth is round, the world is round. And, naila na ito pang that there is a world outside Africa and outside Europe. Amo ini ang kintawang nila, ang Amerika, nga the new world. Kung nato ni Madunduman, mga kulturan. So, katahong sa sininga tiyon sa Renaissance, they were able to see other places, like our country, like the Philippines. 
And because of this exploration, the missionary movement also started. Kaya nagabli nila paminsahon ang mga reformers ng sila. Dapat ang iba niya mga tao, malapot man na ton. They started the mission work. And the gospel of salvation reached our country, na nabot rin sa Pungsod Pilipinas, because of this. Ang muning tayo na naglibot ang mga tao, liwan ang mga kristuhanan. Ang negatibo nga bagay during the Renaissance is what we call colonialism. In pagsakop sa sige mga basko ng mga country, ang mga pigato ng mga country like ours, in colonize kita sa Spain, later on in colonization kita sa Estados Unidos. Yes. And ang mga tao ng colonize, nakadevelop kita sa ginatawag na colonial mentality. Nagpaminsan kita ang inferior kita kag sila lang ang superior. Pero kinalan natin ina i-realize ang hindi natin i-deny ang atin inagihan agod niya makatibawas kita sa sinanginatawag ng colonial mentality. Mga kauturan, tanan kita ang tugas ng Diyos ng alalangay. Wala sa inferior, wala sa superior. Now, the lesson of the Renaissance for us is to explore things outside the four corners of the church. Hindi lang dira ang ministry sa Diyos na nalimit sa sulod sa simbahan. Let us explore different ministries that could spread the gospel. Explore any means that we could use to share the word of God. Sa una ng panahon, kung ninyo madumduman, gintipon ni Kristo Yesus ang mga tao sa kilit sa baybay, sa kilit sa suba, sa, sa kilit sa dalan o sa dini area, kag iya lang tingog ang iya ginagamit to teach. Subong na po na ako nakita sa medium kalapat na sa ato malabot the whole world. Are we using technology to share the word of God? That is one example. Let us explore beyond borders. Now, magkakanto na ako subong sa, sa aton nga Baptist heritage. Kaya mo itong background sa aton kung sa din kita na tao, sila yung kagina. Kita ng mga Baptists are sons and daughters of the Reformation. So that is the background. Let us now go and focus on the Baptist history and what, what, what we can learn from that. So let me start with the English background. So in the 16th century, many English Christians were already demanding reform from the Church of England. So in the time, we split na ang Church of England from the Roman Catholic Church. Kadamos ang issues kung nga nag-split sila, pero nagtunga na sila. Now, the head of the Church of England is not the Pope, but the King of England, or later on, the Queen of England. Ang mga tao na, na sense nila nga ang Church of England during the time man, naging corrupt na, naging selfish, kag naging kalipatan na ang insahe sa mula ang kasulatan. So, hindi na ito makita nga may pila ka mga claimers nga ang Church of England kinanlan nga mag-reform na sila. So several factors, let me cite three factors kung nga ang nag-claimers sila for reform. Number one, the teachings of great reformers such as Martin Luther in Germany and John Calvin in Geneva. So naglabot ina sa England ang arap dito sa Germany taga sa Switzerland. Number two, The new translations of the English Bible also allow the common people to read the Word of God. During that time, sila na kung gagina, wala sa printing press pa, mabuglay sila ang mga tao lang ang mga grano ng may aras ang written ng Bible. But this time, bangon sa printing press, nakapasa na sila sa mga translation in English. The common people. So they know what is right and what is written in the Bible. Number three, the social and political changes which led people to want more participation in their church. So sila na kong hindi ng renaissance, nagdalas na kong magbago, naghatag sa new ideas, so mga tao sila, tapat may participation na kami sa simba. So there were two groups in, within the Church of England na gusto sa reform. The first one is called the Puritans, and the second one were called the Separatists. Okay? Ang Puritans na, na influence ni sila sa reformer kaama ni John Calvin. Gusto nila purity of doctrine and purity of practice in the church. Now, gusto nila na mag-reform within the church of England. But another group seeking reform, itawag sila ng mga separatists. 
kay mga frustrated yuntas ni sila who had given up hope reforming the church from within. So they decided sila na magwak sa Church of England to form their own independent congregations. Grabe ni ilay na giyan kay nga ah, ginapang dako, ikaw kung hindi ikaw member sa Church of England. So, separatists. By 1600, they were already several of these congregations, independent congregations in England. Kag nagdama pa rin sila by the year 1625. Now, the separatists included many groups nga later on gintawang sila ng mga Quakers, the Presbyterians, the Congregationalists, some independent, and some non-conformist. Ang ining ang mga separatists, ang ibang sa ila, they adopted what we call the Believer's Baptism. Kag sino ining ang mga separatists nga nag-adopt sa Believer's Baptism, kag immersion, sa water baptism okay ang method of water baptism is immersion ginatawag ni sila ng mga baptist now dri na natawo ang mga bautista we were called baptists because our foreparents baptized people through immersion amo ni gitawag kita bautista we did not directly come from John the Baptist but we follow the biblical mode of baptism which is through immersion. So makuturan ang tutukod din ng baptism ng araw sa bala ng kasulatan from the Greek word of baptism is baptizo. Ang mood sila yun sina to immerse. So makuturan kung mamangkot ikaw kung ano ang biblical mode of baptism paano din baptize ni John the Baptist si Jesus Jordan River, it was through baptism. Yes. And during this time, ang baptism through immersion, wala ginapraktis. Nga ha, may ibang sprinkling. Ang ibang infant baptism, baby pa, in-baptize, yung tanong tubig niya ulo. But later on, ang mga baptist, ang sila, no, it's not biblical. Let's go back to the Bible. And the Bible is telling us, baptism, it's through immersion. So, dahil natin makita na nga, ah, may meaning ina. May meaning, anong meaning? Naupod ka sa kamatayan ni Cristo Jesus, kaya naupod ka sa pagbanhaw ni Cristo Jesus. So, the Baptist during the time, we started what we call mga biblical teachings and biblical principles. Ang hindi nga mga separatists, some of them went to Holland. Kag hindi mga Baptist, led by John Smith and Thomas Helways, kay pangwag grabing persecution sa England. It was on the year 1608 or 1609 that the separatists held water baptism through immersion. First time. And it was on 1611 that they went back to London and established churches there. Nandung naman yung ina nga time, 1611, that was the time when King James, amunang hari sa England during the time, nag-commission ng na human ang English translation of the Bible na ginatawag niya na King James Version. Now, let's fast forward sa Europe at sa, sa America. Kung paano nagahalin sa Europe at sa America ang Baptist faith. Now, in 1620, some separatists and Baptists traveled to America. Kaya nila yung sakyan, yung unang famous na sakaya na ginatawag na Mayflower. The Mayflower. And they were called the Pilgrims. Among um, some uh, famous foreparents of America. Now, in America, one of the key figures was a person named Roger Williams in 1639. He was expelled from Massachusetts because of his firm belief in the separation of church and state. Si Williams later on, siya rin nagtuga kag uh, nagasubot sa ginatawag na state of Rhode Island. And the Baptist there started Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. My friends, this is the first Baptist institution of higher learning in America. Now understand that, imagine that I mean. Now the prominent issue during the time in America, ngayon na lagi sa mga Baptist, was the issue of religious liberty or religious freedom. Si Walter B. Shorten, sa a Baptist historian, he would later write, that religious freedom 
is the historic Baptist affirmation of freedom of religion, freedom for religion, and freedom from religion, insisting that Caesar is not Christ, and Christ is not Caesar. Very radical in name of Otura during the time in America, because America was still under England. May away pa isla later on, America versus England. America was a colony during that time. And later on, the Baptists were instrumental when America became the United States of America. Not separate na sila sa England and they became the USA. And the U.S. Constitution has a provision even until now. Kagamugin ay isa ka foundation ng gintubong sa mga Baptists. There is a provision of the separation of church and state and the principle of religious liberty. Ang tao, may kailwayan magsimba, o kung hindi man magsimba, kagunano ang iya pagtuluhan. Yes, ang mga bautista was very instrumental sa pagdala sa sina ng mga principles sa sulod sa ilang constitution. Now, fast forward kita, dili sa Asia, dili sa atong lugar. Now, the Baptists arrived in Asia. Sino gibla ng sugod sini after sa Amerika? In 1793, William Carey from England arrived in India. Siya gining una-una kang pinakasikat ng missionary. That is why he was later called as the father of modern missions. Now, let me share two inspiring quotes from William Carey. First, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Mga kauturan ka, tahum sa sinig. Kung may ara kita gali sa endeavor na nag-attempt kita sa daku ng mga bagay para sa Diyos, ang Diyos mismo magabugay sa ato. Siling pag ni William Carey, To know the will of God, we need an open Bible and an open mouth. Wow! Katahong sa sininga principle, mga kulturan, paano natin mabalaan ang kabubutuan sa Diyos? Abrihi, mabalaan niya kasulatan, kag mag-observa sa nagkakalatapo sa palito. In 1813, halin niya sa England, ang halin naman sa Amerika, sino naman niya ang unang mga missionary from America? That's Adoniram Johnson and his wife. In 1813, they arrived from, from America, they went to Burma, and what is called Myanmar, sa sinanitan. So let me share also two inspiring quotes from William Carey. Sini niya, The motto for every missionary, whether preacher, printer, or schoolmaster, is ought to be devoted for life. Wow! Katahong sa sini niya bautista mga kuturan, kay si, si William Carey, no, in-translate niya ang Bible man into the local language. Kagod panudlo man siya, sila niya devoted for life, missionary for life. And the other quote from William Carey, nga ang nami gin nga atong gin man, ibutang sa atong mga prinsipyo is this, The future is, a bright, is as bright as the promises of God. The future is as bright as the promises of God. Mga kautulan na itong idumdumon niya, mga promesa, mga saad sa Diyos, sa balanang kasulatan, wala niya hindi naging talitan. Ginahuman sa Diyos ang tanah niya ng mga promesa sa atin. Now, fast forward. Halim na kita sa Europe, nabuta sa Amerika, nagkanto na sa Asia. Now, here comes anong story na ito niya sa Tungso, Pilipinas. Now, the story of the Philippine Baptists started not here in the Philippines, but it started in Barcelona, Spain in 1898. Anong time ng 1898? Anong natabo sa June 12, 1898? Anong time sa pagdeklarar sa independence of the, our country, Pungsod, Pilipinas? Yes, mga in 1898, may isa dito kas Willis Baptist Missionary na nag-mission sa, sa Barcelona, Spain. Kag, uh, very frustrated siya nga kay si Linya, dream of willing padala sa Sweden man, nga Baptist Missionary Union nga tama, hindi ka katuloy po mga tao dito sa Espanya but one day, nasumata yan sa ka-Pilipino by the name of Braulio Manikan kaga aklan ni si Manikan aklan pa na yung Iwilo kaga nang iswilan sa may Barcelona, Spain now, 
To make the long story short, si Raul Yumanikan was converted into the Baptist faith kaya natugmawan siya through immersion dito sa Barcelona, Spain. Kaya ginintuwang tao, si Lon yung si Manikan, nagplano sila to go back to the Philippines, especially to Panay Island, to do mission work. Pero kaya wala sila kwarta, while waiting for that opportunity, they translated the Bible into Iligalion. Especially the Book of Acts, and the Gospels, especially the Gospel according to Mark. So, kung may araw kita subong sa Bible na inigay nun, kung mabasa na doon sa ilunggo, ang bala na kasulatan, ang pasalamakan na itong tao, si Eric Klon, kag si Raul Yumanika. They started the translation work, which was later na natapos sa may uh, dre, sa may ilu-ilo uh, in the year 1911, mga kulturan. So, Ang ilang opportunity na materialize later on when the American Baptist Foreign Missionary Society sa America naghatag sa kwarta na nag-commission sa ila to do mission. Kaya nag-abot sila sa may ilo-ilo in May of 1900. Amoy na nga isa katradisyon sa Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches na dahiwa kita sa General Assembly kada May kay May man ang pag-abot ni Manikan ito ni Lon sa may ilo-ilo. Now, the Philippine Baptist pastors and American Baptist missionary nagsugod sa mission work at may pattern niya ang ginatawag nila the three-pronged mission pattern. And that pattern is preaching, teaching, and healing. So, three ministries, no? To minister to the whole man, to the whole person, and not just his spiritual or her spiritual needs. Now, Sa 1901, may isa ka na po ng meeting between Protestants dito sa mga Pilipinas kag uh, katahon sa ilang ipuha, dito nga nila ang Pilipinas, gusto ang Visayas Mindanao. Kag sa 1901, na humanong yung natawang uh, committee agreement. Kag ining agreement, ang nagtuwa sa sang bilog na country, kag ang mga baptist ang na-assign sa atol, ang uh, muning lugar ng Negros, Iloilo, Capiz, na lang ang aklan ng Masmati because aklan was part of Capiz during the time and Romblon and also with Mindoro because Mindoro was part of Romblon, Romblon also. So, amoy na mga lugar and that is the reason why na aari din concentration sa mga Baptist sa sininga lugar kay Dre Amuning Inhatag sa Aton. Now, the preaching ministry resulted into the organizing of churches in Iloilo, in Negros, and in Capiz, amoy ng tatlo ka, ka mission stations. For instance, Haro Evangelical Church was organized in September of 1900. Ang first mania was Haro Baptist Church. Now, Bacolod Evangelical Church was in 1902, and Capiz Evangelical Church in 1908. Na ang mga evangelical ni nga lang na hindi Baptist, Kaya sa Committee Agreement of 1901, ang ilang kasuntangan niya ang nanalan sa mga simbahan should include evangelical. Para kung ang Tagaluson makanto sa Visayas, malang niya kung di ang protestante na simbahan makanto sa evangelical church. Now, the healing ministry, ang Philippine Baptist Mission and established a dual hospital sa may Panay Ayinan. The first one is a partnership with the Presbyterians in what we call now the Iloilo Mission Hospital sa 1901. Ang IMH later on became an exclusive Baptist institution in 1925 sa ginhatag na sa mga Presbyterians ang uh, mission work sa mga Baptist diri sa may Iloilo. Kaya naglakat na sila sa Tumagete sa Negros Oriental. In Capiz, a medical mission was also started in 1902 kang inisubong yung natawag na ng Capiz Emmanuel Hospital nagsubo ini sa 1912. And the Philippine Baptist Mission, they also started two schools. The Baptist Home School in Capiz in 1904 and this is now known as Philomer Christian University. And in Iloilo, a Bible school for women was established in 1904 Ka ang leader si May is Anna V. Johnson. Ang buhina sa May Central Philippine University may natawag na Johnson Co. Now this later became the Baptist Missionary Training School, BMTS. Na uli nag-merge ni sila sa College of Theology. So babae na kaglalaki. Now, let's go back. In June of 1905, meaning nga mga babae, in training, 
In 1905, June, nagsugod ang Bible School for Men. And a few months later, in October 1, 1905, another school was opened. And the name of that school is the Haro Industrial School. In Induwaka Eskulahan, ang principal isa lang. Ang principal is the Reverend Dr. William O. Valentine, a pastor and a teacher ng among heads of Induwaka Eskulahan. Now, the Haro Industrial School was an elementary vocational school for boys who worked for their board and tuition. First thing as schools of Philippines and my work students, Kal ang principal is labor is honor. Slaney Valentine, let me go. This is a school that would offer industrial education with a firm base in Christian teachings. So my friends, we all know now that Haro Industrial School is what we now call Central Philippine University. Now in May of May 23, 1935, Diri nga makita kung ano nung natuga sa Sininga time nang tinilipon ang mga simbahan sa Western Visayas kasi sininga na dapat may asosasyon kita ng pangbilogin ng Pilipinas. So, nagsugod ang natawag ng Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches sa May 23, 1935. Ang original din niya na is in Ilongo. It's called the Kasapulanan San Bautista ng Pilipinon. So, ang English translation, Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches. The first general secretary was Reverend George Massa from Antique, and the first president was Dr. Feliciano Zumbito of Negros. A few days later, two days later, May 25, 1935, may isama ang nga natuga. It's called the Talapuanan sa mga manupang mabudlay. Ano ini? It's called the Convention Baptist Ministers Association. Din siya natuga, din siya natawo, dito sa my Baptist Center Church sa La Paz. Now, let me just close my sharing. Na ako pa ko sang i-share sa inyo. But uh, sa sininga time, let me close with an event in World War II. No? Sa atong yung Baptist history, in which now we now call the Hopevale Martyrdom. Ano ba lang ang natapos sa sininga tiyo? On December 19, 1943, after many months of hiding and doing ministry in the area of the Pasco Peace, ang 11 American Baptist missionaries and one boy gilpatay sa mga Japanese soldiers sa Sinaluga. They called their place as Hope Vail because they did not lose hope despite of the war that was happening around them. Nagpatayon sila sa ministry, nagpatayon sila sa ilang mga buluhaton. Kagamina na event mga kuturan sa World War II ang martyrdom sa mga American Baptist missionaries nagpukawliwat sa mga balatsagon sa mga Pilipino ng mga Bautista na magpatayon sa mission work. Nga hindi kita magkataka, hindi kita magpunta kay bangod ang Diyos arap sa aton tubtub sa kamatayon. Now let me share two points. One is a point, one is a point that became a hint. Ining duwa, insulat, sa duwa ka mga missionaries na napatay dito sa COVID. Let me start first by a poem written by Jenny Claire Adams. Isa siya ka missionary nurse na dito nagaupura sa my Capis Emanuel Hospital during the time kag nagupo dito sa my hope. Let me read her words. It says, Let me live bravely. For life has many battlefields where valor must be shown. Many darkened corners where pain and fear are known. Life calls for sacrifice, to share the highest good, to serve courageously, sometimes to give life's blood. As others live and gain, let me be prayed. Let me serve faithfully, content with work to do, whatsoever life may bring. I am serving others well, thus do I serve my King. May I not grow weary, when tasks in burdens up, nor turn aside the straw before life's work is done. As others serve, prove through, let me be faithful to. Let me die for Italy, steadfast in faith and calm. When that great day is near, knowing no war of dread, feeling no anxious fear, 
for death is by the door, closed tight on pain and strife. A door that opens up that we may enter life. As heroes die, still brave and true, let me die too. Mabuturan na tuod gil ang insulat ni Jenny Claire Adams. And on those days before Christmas time, she gave her life to the Lord. Gitatay siya sa mga hapon. Now let me also share to you words written by Francis Rose, by the Reverend Dr. Francis Howard Rose. Nga sa tao ngayon tagaan din sa Central Philippine University sa Dako Madungo, kaya ni sa Dako nga hall sa may campus ng CPO is called the Rose Memorial Hall. Ang ining ining sulat niya later on became a hymn, and it's entitled the Martyr's Hymn. So it says, "All human progress up to God has stained the stairs of time with blood. For every gain for Christendom is bought by someone's martyrdom." For us, he poured the crimson cup and bade us take and drink it up. Himself, he poured to set us free. Help us, O Christ, to drink with thee. Ten thousand saints come thronging home from lions then and catacomb. The fire and sword and beast defied. For Christ their King, they gladly died. All human progress up to God has stained the stairs of time with blood. For every gain for Christendom is bought by someone's martyrdom. With the eye of faith we see today the cross-led column wind up its way up life's repeated Calvary. We rise, O Christ, to follow thee. Yes, makuturan ng inmartir man si Francis Rose and he gave his life to the Lord. The Hopewell story did not end there. After World War II, the pilot who led the attack of Pearl Harbor, siya nang nag-send man sa code word na Torah, 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 or meaning Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. He heard the story of Peggy Covell, the daughter of the missionaries who were killed in Hopewell. Peggy, during the time, was helping Japanese soldiers, mga kuturan, prisoners of war ng mga hapon. Wow! Nagkakulay ng tao nga ang iya limitangan hindi patay sa mga hapon. This pilot could not comprehend why Peggy could do that. When he found out that it was Peggy's Christian faith that she could do that, this pilot, by the name of Commander Mitsuo Fuchida, gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mga kuturan, nagkambiyo ang kabuhin sa sining ang piluto bangon sa pagtuo sa sining mga missionaries nga na martir kag na kabuhin ang ilang mata sa isang kristuhan ang nakabuhin kag siya mismo nakambiyo. He went on to become an evangelist and later on a partner even of Billy Graham. Wow! Sa pagkamatuon, sulitan kong inambal ni Dr. Rose ang iyagi na ang insulat ng inambal ko. All human progress up to God has stained the stairs of time with blood. For every gain for Christendom is bought by someone's martyrdom. Yes, makuturan ang martyrdom sa mga missionaries natin sa Oakbell. They did not die in vain because people were convicted later on and they gave their lives to the Lord. Sa subong ang story sa Hobel, arat na sa planning stage, arat na kaga hopefully mahuman na yun, kag matayon na mahimuan na sa sini. And the movie is coming up so that this story of Hobel will be a channel to share the message of the gospel. My friends, here is my challenge for us today. Since 1898, the Philippine Baptist Mission has grown. More than 1,000 churches na kita, more than 1,000 pastors na uh, mga uh, katawahan sa Convention of Philippine Baptist Churches, kagamo sa atong membro from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. But the, the Baptist mission 
continues and it should continue. My friends, like what happened to the prophet Isaiah and up to today, God is calling people to do mission. Are you willing to become like them? To do mission does not mean that you will become a preacher. To be a missionary means that you are committed to share the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ wherever you are and in whatever means. My friends, let me ask you this question as I end. Are you willing to answer the call of God and say, Here I am, O Lord. Please use me. Please send me. May God bless us all. Amen.